Hey guys, well, it's officially 2021 and we are back at it with videos. How can we not start the year off right with the Springfield Armory SOCOM 16 CQB M1A 308 hog gun that we talked about last year. Now this has been probably one of the most commented videos of 2020. It was definitely one of the guns that everybody wanted to know more about, wanted to really see. I, obviously this gun has been on the market for years. It's not a new gun by any means. So if if you're thinking that I'm, I'm saying that this is new for 21, it's not new. It's just new for us to review for you guys. And well, you guys can see I've made a modification. I've added a scope to it and well, Maybe you guys haven't seen this, so why don't you guys go back and check out our first look. I'll leave a little card up here, and you'll get an opportunity to see this gun in action to begin with. Now, for those of you guys who have already seen that first look, or are planning on watching that first look a little bit later on, we'll continue on with the review, but I will tell you this. I got this gun in collaboration with an article for The Armory Life, which is a blog online magazine for Springfield Armory. So we wrote an article and did a video for them about this being my new hog gun and the optic that I had put on there. And we're gonna talk about why that optic is no longer here and why I actually sent it back and replaced it with this for the time being. So if you want to see that article, link will be in the description below. I highly recommend going and checking out the Armory Life, they have a lot of content if you're looking for Springfield Armory info from other sources. This is a place for articles and videos to be produced by people who are not Springfield Armory. People like myself who want to go and put out a, uh, uh, an article or a video for you guys involving something that's their product. And we've actually done several reviews over there. So if you guys want to go and check it out, highly recommend that. Why don't we jump into the actual review, starting with the scope. Now, in the beginning, I told you guys that I really wasn't entirely sure. Maybe I told you guys exactly what I was going to be doing. This is my hog gun for 2020. Now, since then, I've actually switched over back to a bolt action, chambered in 762 by 39, but that's only because we are in a pandemic and I can still get 762 by 39 a lot cheaper than I can get 308. Now, obviously I love my 308 because it's a heavy round, it's a rifle round, it's not an intermediate cartridge, and it's in a 30 caliber package. Overall, it's one of my favorite rounds. I love the 308. It is definitely up there in my top three as my go-to rounds. So obviously I wanted a rifle for hog hunting that I could go and put onto this awesome Kofjaeger tripod or Reaper grip so that way that I can sit out here at night hunting with just holding the package like this. I'm not having to carry the gun out. I can set it in one spot, have a full 360 view of where I'm hunting and it's very comfortable. So I went and got myself a Sightmark Wraith. This is a day-night scope. And go and check out the review of it on the Armory Life, but you'll see that it's no longer up here. And the bigger reason is, is, well, <laughs> since then they've come out with a new scope, the 4K. And, well, I, I couldn't just hold on to a 1080p when I knew that there was a 4K camera coming back out. So. Obviously, I wanted something that has higher resolution, which means it's going to be a better camera, a better optic, and that's what we're waiting for. So currently, we're waiting for them to be back in stock so we can get one mounted to at least one of our guns and get back out here to hog hunting. So if you're looking at the scope going, well, what is that? Again, I'll put a link up here and a link in the description for you guys. This is another sight mark. It is a three to 18 power, which is perfect for what we're doing because, well, we're out here at the 100 yard range and you guys hate hearing me talk, so let's go and shoot. I've got 10 rounds. Let's go and see what we can do on paper. I've got my camera set up down range so that you guys got the actual target footage. Let's do this. So 
So now we have 10 rounds, but I do want to address one comment that we got on another video a few months back that basically said, hey, whenever you're showing the camera, why does it always look like you are cutting every few seconds? Big reason is, is that when you guys are actually seeing our target, I want to give you the best shots possible, which means that I go a lot slower and I really try to tighten my groups up as much as possible which means it takes longer to shoot. So, well, in editing, I just trim everything down and compress it all to make it a short clip instead of a five to 10 minute long clip that it normally takes to shoot this. So that just tells you a little bit about what we're doing and why some footage is a nice full thorough shooting and the other ones are kind of chopped up. So this one's gonna be chopped up because, well, we're taking it slow. We're out here at 100 yards. Let's see what we can do. Another comment that I got when discussing these magazines is that Checkmate is an awesome brand. Now I haven't tried them out personally, but from what I have read in the comments, you guys say Checkmate makes great magazines. They are highly worth it. So if you guys are looking for magazines and if you can find them, Checkmate is apparently the brand to go with. They make 25 round magazines. So go and pick up some mags from them. Apparently they're pretty great. Now, I want to talk to you guys about stocks, and in particular, the Archangel, but really we're going to go over all of them so you guys can see them all. I'm going to run them down on the screen here. Springfield Armory has a lot of different variations of the M1A. You have all different lengths, you have different muzzle devices, you have all kinds of setups, but the majority of the differences are going to be in the stock itself. So why did I go with the SOCOM 16 CQB? And the reason is, is this stock. First off, I like to have an adjustable stock. I really want to go and have a butt stock that moves so that way that, hey, maybe I'm a little bit more padded up because it's cold, I can go a little bit tighter in. Hey, it's warmer, I need a little bit farther out. Or in general, I can just change it for whatever my scope is because, well, when I'm running my uh, Wraith, I need to have it a little bit tighter up on my face and adjusting that length of pull Makes me a lot happier because hey, I can go and get it dialed in exactly how I want it and Leave the scope where it's at meaning that other people can use it and adjust it for them overall I think that's just Worth having now. I will talk about the Archangel stock now those of you guys who don't know Archangel is pro mag Promag does make good products. They are not as high quality as something like Magpul or you know your really high-end brands, but they don't claim to be. They don't say that hey, we are the hardest, toughest, best battle mag on the planet, or even we make the best products on the planet. They do make decent products that work, and I will not bash them for that because hey, I actually do use Promag mags in my ARs. They function, they've been functioning for the last, oh, nine years in my ARs, and they've shot well over 10,000 rounds in one magazine alone. So I'm not really too worried about them, whether they're functioning, because the kind of shooting that we're doing out here, my life isn't depending on it. Now, will it function if my life depends on it? Probably. So, going back to Archangel. Archangel makes these stocks and you know, it really looks like it was an aftermarket stock that I installed in here because, you know, hey, it doesn't have the Springfield branding all over it, which is interesting to me that they didn't go with a branded Archangel stock with the big Springfield logo on the side and, and really make sure that everybody knows who built this rifle. They really kept it as, well, it looks like it's been modified 
if you don't know that it comes like this or comes in this stock and I'm, I'm cool with that I'm, I'm cool with it showing off the brand that actually made it because Archangel does make different stocks different products that you guys might be interested in so I highly recommend going through Archangel and looking them up because they may have something for your 1022 that might interest you or a boxy drum mag that works for your gun they've got a whole bunch of different products that are worth checking out would I go with anything other than this stock? Um, honestly, probably not. Like I said, where it came down to the important things for me is right here. I wanted to have that adjustable length of pull because I knew what I was doing with this rifle. Now, for those of you guys who are looking for that more authentic look, that more, you know, this is a an M14. Yeah, definitely go with that wood stock or go with the camo stock or go with any other pattern. Is this a bad stock? No, it works great. It has multiple points for slings. You've got M lock on here so you can run more rails. Obviously, you don't have much rail length in, on the top. You just have this short one. So I am going to recommend that you guys go with something like an already built um night scope or day night scope something that is already all built in one all your rings go in one spot it's just going to be better for you in the long run now if you guys are looking at this you do see that i do have the scope on here and we're going to flip this gun around and we're going to flip sides nobody's over here so we don't care we have two giant knobs on this side of the gun and um I know what you guys are thinking. There's a third one right here. Appreciate that. I agree. So this, this was an interesting design. They decided that the way that this is going to go together is you're going to have these screws and you're going to have to fit into the dovetail. But once you put this particular mount onto this rifle, hey, it only will ever pair to this rifle. For some reason, the way that they wanted to design it is that it bends a little bit and meshes to the rifle, and then you zero your gun off of that, so you never really want to pull this off. I don't know if I really want these giant knobs on the side, if this is always going to stay on there, but it works for the gun. I haven't had to tighten anything down since installing it, and this gun has been shot about a thousand times since we last saw you guys so it's definitely had the opportunity to come loose if it wanted to um, it does come in a little kit that you have to buy as an aftermarket part if you buy this rifle without it it's not a big deal for installing it you just have to have a little bit of willingness to look on YouTube as their directions their paper directions are horrendous now for those of you guys who are like well you know I did it with it I recommend looking at the YouTube videos because it really helps figuring out what they're talking about instead of seeing these little black and white photos and you're hoping that you got everything all correct. Once it's all attached and lined up, you're done. You never have to pull it off again. Now obviously you could run a scout scope way up here, but I don't want to run a scout scope. I want to run either my red dots that, you know, mount to these small little plates if I'm going real close, being able to run my tube scopes. I don't want to have this particular mount. I would really rather the M1A, the SOCOM 16 CQB to be set up like this from the box rather than this from the box. Being CQB, I really don't need to have my red dot way, way up here if I want to have a magnifier on here. I'm having to push out for that and that's just not what I'm looking for. This mount right here works for me. Now March 2021 will be the one year anniversary of us shooting this gun. So obviously I'm getting as close to our one year mark as I feel is right. Um, mostly because I wasn't shooting it as much as I wanted to. I really thought hey this gun would be used almost every weekend out here hunting hogs, coyotes, other things like that, but it got used, just not for the length of time that I thought I would be using it. 
I've been using it when I know that I've got a hog out here at a distance where I feel more comfortable being able to take a follow-up shot rather than having something that's 320 yards away where I'm really sitting there dialed in and I want to have that pinpoint accuracy. This one is really my go-to rifle if I had ammunition. It works. It's semi-auto. It, well, personally, I have one 10-round mag and two 20-round magazines for this gun. And honestly, that's really all I've needed so far, but definitely think I'm gonna be checking out Checkmate for the magazines as everybody highly recommends them. And that's awesome. I love our community being able to say, hey, go and check this out because it's awesome. Now, obviously, you guys want to know the specs of the gun. And before we get into that, I do want to talk one thing that I was hoping for that doesn't work out for this particular model. But at the end, you can't unthread it and mount a suppressor. If that is what you are looking at this for, really this rifle is not designed for that. All of the front is designed to be kept together and, and that's okay. Um, suppressors are cool. Suppressors are definitely worth having, but if you're looking for a gun that is going to be fast and easy to mount a suppressor to, this is not your gun. Look in there. You may find some guns that have been modified already. Gun Broker has a lot of selection when, you know, we're not in a pandemic. Go and check those out. You may find something. You also may find this gun that's not at, you know, their MSRP of $2,200. It's a little high, but it's a great gun. So, yeah. Eh. It's right there at the level of being just over being more than it's worth. Some people are gonna say, no, this gun is definitely worth the price tag, go and get it every time. But honestly, seeing this probably at 18, 16, really these are the price ranges that it should be. I think that with Springfield being able to produce as many as they do and really being the only ones who do produce them, they have the opportunity to drop the price and make them a little bit more affordable, but hey, they keep the, the prices set themselves. I have no control over that. I'll let you guys determine if the worth is worth to you or, or not, but definitely go and shoot one if you can. Hey, hey sorry, just uh, wanted to interrupt real quick. Um, times are really crazy and the world is just kind of in a weird state and uh, I just I want to, to tell you guys if you guys are concealed carrying you got to protect yourself you, know, you, you protect yourself with the, the firearm on your hip or concealed but you need to make sure that you guys are backed by a, a, a group that can handle this if this world comes to a time where you may need to defend yourself I'll put a link to the USCCA. I don't really want to call them insurance, but they are a group of people who are out there to help you, the concealed carry member, make sure that no matter what, you're protected. To keep your rights there for you. And why don't we jump back into the video. All right, discussing the specs of the M1A SOCOM 16 CQB. The rifle is only chambered in 308. They do not have the 6.5 Creedmoor with the SOCOM 16 version. If you really want a um, 6.5 Creedmoor, you can go and really build this out. Like I said, the stock is not a proprietary stock by any means. It only comes in black. The barrel length is 16.25 inches with a six groove carbon steel one and 11 right hand twist. The front side is an excess post with tritium insert. It's got a blade on there. The rear side is a ghost ring with an aperture of 0.35 aperture MOA um, adjustments for windage and elevation. Again, we really kind of skipped over all of that because, hey, I wanted a scope on here. The stock, like I said, is a CQB adjustable from Archangel, a trigger. Well, 
it's a two-stage trigger. I kind of like it. It's not one of those make or break things for me. It does have a muzzle device on the end of it that is just a bunch of dots. Nothing to write home about. It does come with one magazine. I think it should come with two, as most guns should come with a minimum of two, not a minimum of one magazine. The weight is a little bit heavy, coming in at nine pounds and two ounces. Well, it's a battle rifle. It's a 308. Yeah, the weight really shouldn't be a, oh my gosh, it's, it's too heavy. Nine pounds works for me, I guess. Length is going to be between 35 and a half and 38 and a half, depending on the length of pull that you have on your stock. All right, final thoughts time. Well, let's start off with the front of the gun. Muzzle device, nothing to write home about. I would really have rathered it been a threaded on muzzle device that I can replace myself. That way that in the age where people are actually buying suppressors, we can run that or hey, maybe we could change it out to a different muzzle device. That is something that I would have liked to have seen. Again, these are, are things that I just would like. These are thoughts. If you don't like them, that's on you. If you guys think, well, you know, you gotta, gotta keep it exactly. Well, you know, guns are designed to be interchangeable and we should be allowed to do anything we want to them. And gun makers should really think about that. Even a gun that is a hundred years old, if they're making one, why not come out with a new gun that has more features? Kind of like adding the rail to the 1911. Hmm, that gun, Definitely didn't have rails when it first came out, but gun manufacturers have been making it since then. I guess gun manufacturers can go and, and modify existing guns to have new features. The sights on here, obviously I went immediately to a rail because this scout scope on or scout scope rail on here did not work for me, so I wanted to go and throw a new rail on here. That's something that I needed. And honestly, I wish that Springfield gave the option from their, their purchasing to have with rail or without. Have it pre-mounted to the gun so you don't have to mount it. You don't have to do any gunsmithing. You can just have your scope ready to go and just mount it the day you get this. Talking about the uh, stock, well, I think you guys know I like it. I like that it isn't overly branded, that you guys don't have these massive bright red letters, Springfield Armory. You do have Springfield Armory here, and you have your Archangel stock um, logos here and on here on the stock. It's not prominently displayed. It's not forcing it on you that it is an aftermarket stock. It is something that you can go and replace your M1A with which means you don't have to go and buy a brand new SOCOM 16 CQB to get this stock. You can have what you want. I love the stock because, hey, it's got enough mounting points on here for me. It has it right where I want it on the back for the QD mount, so that way that I can have it sling with a single point sling, or I have two points on both sides, so I can sling it over my shoulder with a two point. Look at all this inlock both sides as well as going all the way back underneath you have so much area to throw accessories like flashlights and IR lasers and cup holders maybe um, maybe a GoPro mount I don't know you could do so much with this yeah you don't have length up here for more uh, night vision rails but that's okay I don't really need one because, well, most companies are now producing tube scopes that are day-night scopes as well as just night vision scopes that work great for this. Which means you don't have to have a whole fancy setup and having something extra on the end. You can go and run your, your age-old tube scopes or even red dots if you want. Now, obviously, this has been my hog gun for the last year, kind of, and... It's been very accurate. Um, I lost three little piglets due to um, tall grass with this gun. Everything else has had no issue taking them down. I like it. It functions great. And the Kofieger 
uh, Reaper grip with the K700 tripod that we have this mounted to. It's a nice stable platform, as you guys saw on my, um, my shots at 100 yards. You know, I have no problem being able to take out my targets, hit my targets down range, no problem. It's 308. Now, many of you guys are thinking, well, you know, I really want 6.5 Creedmoor, and you know, that's great for you guys. But many of you guys know that the reason that I don't go with 6.5 Creedmoor is I carry a lot more 308. I have more 308 guns than I have 6.5 Creedmoor, and I can shoot more with it. I'm not spending the premium price for 6.5 Creedmoor that I, 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 I don't want to, or... Let me rephrase that. I'm not paying for the premium cost of the 6.5 Creedmoor versus something that is an age-old round, the 308. It's a cheaper, easier to find round. I can find it in so many different uh, brands that I can get different bullet weights, different bullet types to do anything that I'm looking for. And you just don't have that yet with the 6.5 Creedmoor or the 6 Creedmoor or any of the other new calibers that are currently coming out that everybody is going goo goo gaga over. Sure, they should offer this in 6.5, but it's not something that I personally care about because I like to be able to sit out here and shoot and not waste so much more money on a caliber that hasn't come down in price yet. Similar to 300 Blackout. Overall, the gun shoots well. It's a lot of fun to shoot. It is something that I love having in my collection. And the price tag on it, you know, it is what it is to me. It's, I know that it's a battle rifle, and I know that the price right there is not going to hinder me by being in the five to $10,000 range. It's still within a normal range for a 308 semi-auto rifle. You may find some, some lower end 308s that are sub $1,000, but are they going to be good? People who are cutting costs to try and, and make a gun, you know, cheaper, you know, you get what you pay for. And while, you know, Springfield has been bounced around in names, they still make good products. Still make stuff that works time and time again. And I like it. Well, guys, um, it's 2021. Uh, as the the moment that we are shooting this video, uh, Parlor has just been um, shut down with our servers, so we are not seeing Parlor right now. But we're hoping that Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, all of that stays intact, and that you guys will go like, comment, and subscribe on all of those, as well as our YouTube videos. I hope you guys will stick around, hit that bell icon when you guys subscribe so you guys are notified of every new video that we release. I believe 2021 is going to be more about the review than the first look as we've been doing all of the first looks in 2020 and now it's time to bring you the full reviews and our final thoughts on those guns. Now obviously I do still have guns coming in. We are scrounging around every gun that we can and I do have a meeting later on this week to hopefully bring you some really awesome content that will be in collaboration with another company that we will be working with hopefully in the coming year. So stay tuned for that and well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.